Oh my god! <laughs> Brought to you by Oscar Mayer. <laughs> what? Why is this guy so hated? Well, <laughs> I don't even know that he is hated anymore. I think it's starting as a rib, and now it's evolved into like just an <laughs> ongoing running joke that he's in on, and and it's just it's a funny. That he's in on. It's the most publicity he's had in like 20 years. So I mean, but besides that one case, you know, at the petting zoo, that's a different story. You don't want to have that. <laughs> no, I mean it really all like I, the the initial heat. I think was all because of a stinker match with Flex Reed, but. Other than that, I mean, a stinker <laughs> match with everybody. Cause... <laughs> no, actually, he had a really good match with Kit Reaver. It wasn't much. Well, it was <laughs> it wasn't much. It's but... like, dude, I, I had some good matches too, but it was more because of the other guy. Yeah. And, and I'm a Reaver fan, so that's <laughs> that's when it comes to Kansas wrestling, he's on my short list of guys that uh, he needs I to do very it. little wrong. Oh, I get okay. a short list because he's about. <laughs> Five, five or something. Okay, I got I've you. Got a person blowing smoke up Kit Reaver's ass. I'm about sick of it. <laughs> well, I mean, the kid's talented, and he, you know, more the, talented than I am. We got the Jim Ross wannabe over there on commentary. Oh, come on now. <laughs> oh my gosh, Stone Cold, Stone Cold. I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. Who sit there and blew smoke up your ass thinking that was good? Well, you know, you gotta get into it a little bit. That's I mean, well, I yeah, but don't be. Hey, I mean, some of that you sound like bad DJs on a Sunday afternoon going, Yeah, we're coming here, dog. Yes, all right. Oh, no, I German kick Reaver out of his boots, and the announcer's like, And he has nine finishing holds, and what's Carl going to do? And he's laying asleep on the ground. Well, you know, uh, a, a German suplex from Killer Carl is not something you want to experience. No, I've seen that's an everyday. Basically, experience. kill people every time. It's. I, I, there's a guy in Kansas so City I really want to see too, but for a who reason. just Germans better, Killer Carl or Kurt Gannon up in Kansas City. Okay, that's because, the only thing I will say. Carl is probably better. Kurt is good. I like watching yeah, his stuff. The suplex cyclone, Kurt Gannon. He's that guy. Good, suplex cyclone. Right. He, he is really good. Before he switched that uh, I, I'm not <laughs> sure, but the, Kurt's that, that awesome. guy, dude, he throws people around like they're just children. Like <laughs> they're just hey, children. Yeah, like he. I mean, yeah, but he's dude, about like, twice the size of Carl. I mean, he's he's massive. He is. That, yeah, that guy's guy, a brick house. Nah, his stuff's legit. I mean, yeah. but but I Carl, would love man, to see I, him. No, he's German suplex my tag team partner, so I can't be too happy about it. <laughs> but at a PCW show, I remember watching Carl German suplex Bubba Sutton out. Oh, okay, because I, I I was waiting. You'd have thought it was going to go out the uh, tear his I'm... damn beard off with the force that went with that. Okay, because well, his balls hit him in the chin. I, I, I am I am so that. glad that you didn't say he su- he he uh, suplex Eddie Rydell. You're like, uh, oh my God, if you got if that you guy, suplex on... Eddie Rydell. Holy really, smokes! If you could suplex. Eddie, you can make you're Eddie defy gravity. You're pretty good. <laughs> but that's a husky son of a gun. Yeah, but he's working. He, oh, he's I know. I'm down. just saying. They swim down quite a bit. Um, man, I, I wish me and Eddie got to see each other more because of the distance, though. Uh, like we don't get to do a lot more tag stuff yeah. that we'd like to. Like where it's a lot Where's easier. He out of? He's basically on the Missouri. Okay, so he's Order. down in Southeast? Yeah, he's like, okay. like an hour outside of Pittsburgh. Jesus. Like, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's almost closer for him to wrestle in Missouri than it is to wrestle in Kansas. <laughs> he's got to wrestle but it's in cheaper Kansas. to wrestle in Kansas right, than Missouri. Yeah. Missouri yeah. Steps a nightmare with the tag. Absolutely. Well, and, and unfortunately, I don't know if you guys have kept up with the news here recently, but I think that a lot more regulation is going to come to wrestling nationwide just because of a... Oh, mud, the thing in New mud, Albany, mud, Indiana. Mud, mud show outlaw bullshit. <laughs> but... Yes, if you've gone to this show, get checked for Hep C or HIV, possibly. Now, but those those <laughs> headlines were so sensationalized. And, and... Well, I understand, but I mean that's a. I mean, to be honest, and I mean, I know it's one of Kenny Zombie Jones's favorite little places because he met a lot of good guys there. Yeah. Got a lot of experience, but I mean that's like shithole promotion. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, absolutely. I mean. Dude, it, not trying to sound too totally mean, but that's just the honest truth. It's like <laughs> you walk in the building and you wonder if you're going to have to go get vaccinated. It's kind of bad. Well, and and I I can't. And that's speak just for the, the crowd shaking hands. I, I, <laughs> oh my god! Have you seen some of the dredges that go in there? It's worse Dude, than I've, been, I've been in some places where I'm like, oh, I don't want to shake your hand. I'm not kissing no babies at this show. That's for damn sure. That's but, 
for Nam I'm sitting on Jiggy Jaguar's couch, so I really can't well, be that this, concerned with this, yours. This, this, oh, Kenny this, Zombie this, Jones is slumped there. Sanitized, anymore, so. right? yeah. Ken, Kenny Zombie Jones. Not, not that couch, but I've had other couches that Kenny has slept on. But, carpets and... Yeah, this couch is relatively new compared to the piece of shit that was in here last time. <laughs> it was like a green couch that had blood and cum stains everywhere. It was like, what? Dude. What it wasn't horror from Kitty Zombie it. Jones about Aaron, the bad thing was it didn't start out being green. No. <laughs> Looks like so, a bad night at one of those porn expos yeah. you go to. <laughs> Erotica Jiggy Jaguar edition. That's right. Oh, yeah. on the Sunday radio program. <laughs> Hi there. We have all the bodily fluids on this couch, so hey, you need it? Yeah, sure, dude. I got a friend Kenny that'll sleep on it. So we, I was talking with Carl and John earlier about Bischoff and Heyman being hired to run Raw and SmackDown. What do you think of this? Uh, I think it's a really, it's it's a unique move. Um, so my my thing with it, I I'm more towards young people getting opportunities with that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I think Paul Heyman is probably the greatest mind wrestling has ever known. Um, at least he's up there. It, it, to me, it's him, uh, Jim Ross, Jim Cornette. Um, I think Paul Heyman is the greatest. Um, oh, he sees things in people others don't and knows how to accent their positives and make sure you don't see the negative. It, exactly. I think Paul Heyman's one of those guys who can take uh, a, maybe a guy that's not necessarily ready to be yeah. there and, and – polish him enough to where he's a main event guy and he can take your hot fresh dog turds and polish them to main event or to <laughs> mid-level <laughs> guys fresh that are making but no, no, but you look, look so basically at, you're saying he can make bones Connolly look good well if you look at some of the original ecw um <laughs> there is guys in that ecw locker room that would not get booked on independence today they just wouldn't and but he took their unique abilities, uh, some of them for pain tolerance, <laughs> and he polished them to where so now they are some of the most tolerance. recognizable names in wrestling. I mean, you look at a guy like, like Balls Mahoney, okay? Balls Mahoney is a right. major <laughs> draw. Well, you look at that guy and you tell me he's getting booked on independent wrestling today in not outlaw mud shows, and, and I'm, I'm telling you bullshit. Yeah, like, not in a main you. event level, but <laughs> Paul's Mahoney made more money than most independent guys will ever make because of that. But he was also a star way before that, before ECW, with um, Smoky Mountain. He was Boo Radley there. Mm. Chris, Chris Candido in the program made him look good, and then he became like the sympathetic, like, Cactus Jack figure there. Uh, well, okay, so here's another example. Who no, are I'm the not saying you're wrong. Who are the two fellers that... Um, fellers? They, they did... <laughs> They did the they did a they did a match that I've never seen done since and it's the brutal. No, no, that was a different band. Um but basically they, they taped their hands, dipped it in super glue, and then rolled it oh, in uh, like glass. Ian Rotten, Ian Rotten and his brother and Oh, they beat the hell out of each and other. Dude, they did the Kuma tape. The, uh, it's 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 <laughs> if you go back uh, and watch that or... match, it's uncomfortable. And I have a high violence tolerance uh i mean i can handle you know the blood and guts and stuff yeah, but damn that agree. looks like a, a like a fucking casting for a saw movie <laughs> well, this is where <laughs> i agree with yeah, cornet i mean bullshit movie. stuff like that it's just that's taken a little bit too far i understand some stuff but it's like if you have to sit there and break light tubes all over yourself all the time you suck you probably should get out of the business See, in my and, opinion, I mean, people <laughs> like get out of the people will sit there and say like, "Oh, there's a market for it." No, there really isn't. You got a small niche market for it, and that's it. It's like some people like watching, you know, the American Way have sex with goats, but it doesn't sell to everybody. You nope. Know? <laughs> but it's popular in Pakistan. <laughs> just gonna end up getting the old recycled stuff that you got before. You're not gonna get anything 
creative or new from well, these two gentlemen at least. And yep, there's nothing Bobby. new in wrestling. It's all been recycled and just packaged differently. Come watch me next show, big boy. You'll see something. <laughs> see, my, my thing with it, man, is... I mean, it'll be all original. Nobody's ever done a German suplex. I, I always look at... the way I do, baby. Well, yeah, most of the guys are actually safe when they hit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I look Go at ahead. wrestling a lot like a, an actual business, mind. man. And From the German suplex? Not yeah. that many. Everything <laughs> just else over here arguing over Oh, no, I'm all right with this. I like listening to it sometimes. <laughs> But no, I look I okay, look at it like ahead. an actual business thing where it's like, for every fan you might draw in because you did some super hellacious hardcore, oh my god, did you witness that? You're turning off every soccer mom in that <laughs> arena who's bringing her four little kids who are buying the merchandise. And so if I'm turning away five fans to get the one sweaty adult fan who's going to cheer no that shit. Sweaty adult. Uh, who's spending more money? I guarantee you it's the four little kids and their soccer mom. Yeah, are, you talking about, are you talking about Ryan Williams from, the, yeah. from Sunflower or Wrestling? Uh, or whatever? Even Ryan's not big on the on the blood and gut stuff. Now, but <laughs> I don't want that opinion to get confused with that I think that blood isn't doesn't have a spot in wrestling or that it hardcore does, but it doesn't. needs to be really minimal and it needs to be brought out only on special occasions and you don't need to make it look like somebody did like a remake of carrie in the ring like with dustin and cody that got carried away a little bit too much just because maybe where he gigged but i mean i think it got hard way to open yeah. though too they um they needed i i'll be real honest i mean i was about ready to fucking vomit because i was so sick of that it they kept that going for another 30 seconds. I probably would have left. If they weren't brothers, they probably wouldn't have kept it going. But well, and yeah, but Dustin's me, had a pretty questionable past. He had no idea what the hell was going on with that dude. I don't know, man. See, I differ in your opinion on that. I thought that was such a perfect story. Um, no, the story is great, but the over-excess of the blood turned a ton of people off to that. If he's basically completely coated in blood, you've carried it a little bit too far. A, a good example, in my opinion, of tactful use of blood here, at least on the local scene, yeah. is if you were at the XWE Awakening show, I've hit Paradox in the head with a folding chair, which is a big no-no for a lot of people, but uh, he bled, and he bled a lot, but it was the end of the match, and uh, he went up and got the, the end, title. Not like 20 minutes of him having a gush of going... Yeah. No, I, I agree everything. that... It was probably too early for the bleeding right. when it happened. That's what I the, mean. It's like, like hard placements a lot. Sometimes you got to sit there and make a snap decision, and I would have ended that match a hell of a lot earlier because it was really turning me off. And I mean, there's not that much in wrestling that turns me off. Uh, comedy wrestling turns me away. I like it when oh, it's so done in the right <laughs> spot. <laughs> uh, no, no. If you do some hands in the pockets. Phony Wait, we're talking about fucking him bullshit with me. I'm kicking you square in the fucking jaw. Orange Cassidy. We oh my god. I'm going to call him like Jim Cornette calls him. He's just pockets from now on. Pockets. I don't like it. See, now I actually seen a match he had against him. Um, what's his name? David Starr. David Starr, if you look up that Put match, it was actually block. really good. It started out kind of like that, but about three minutes in, completely changed. I mean, it was vicious and it was good. And that was a spot where they had a little bit of blood, but not too much. And it actually ended up pretty good. Made me have a whole different idea on him. I agree the pockets all the time thing is retarded. It's good to start off with a little bit. Oh, uh, we know. can't use that word, sir. It is mentally deficient. <laughs> yeah, get it's, it. Basically, retarded means that you're slowed, and that slows down the process of a good match. I mean, basically, it killed Tommy Dreamer, in my opinion. Oh, I, I thought it buried Dreamer in front of a national audience. Yep. And... Here's my thing with that, because people are like, well, it's their money. You let them do what they want. No, because what happens is this company is coming out with a major financial backer on yep. a major network. And so if it fails, then wrestling in major sponsors and advertisers and, and even on a local scene, advertisers' eyes fails. And so it hurts the independent business that you claim to love. It hurts the entire business overall because – if you go out there and you do, do this hokey pokey bullshit and a bunch around. of people 
it, it and it kills wrestling or hurts wrestling, then you are hurting not only your own company but companies all over the world because now people won't advertise with us, now people won't sponsor with us, which it's already a niche market to try and get that done, Plus and that's tough. It's where tough. Where Dreamer's at in the Northeast, there he's. A, he's I mean, it's He's a gonna be hard for there. him to book stuff now, though. That's going to be any more legit with him taking that. Well, and I, now, I, my opinion on it, I guess, comes from a point where I do have to do so much of the backstage stuff on the local level for sponsors and everything. So I'm constantly thinking about everything that we do, uh, or that I yep. see. How does this impact advertising? How does this impact finances? How does this impact the business side of it? Because, yeah, it's a, it's an art and. You oh, know, yeah. art is subjective, and it should be fun, and all of that. But at the end of the day, we're still trying to be a business. And if you're not a profitable business, or if you're not doing things to build that business, then you are doing it wrong. I'll tell you a company to pay attention to, and they're doing it smart, is MLW. Oh, I love MLW. Oh, I'm my a, God, MLW. I'm a Holy big smokes. MLW guy. MLW I, I think it's just a great MJF. program. And that kid is that kid the is next. Amazing. That kid is the next <laughs> huge, 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 huge star. But he's going to be an indie star. I don't think he's going to go much further. Yeah, I know, but I'm it's saying gonna he's going to make some serious money. <laughs> it's going to be huge. <laughs> Trust me, when I talk about professional wrestling, I know more than anyone knows. Okay, MJF is going to be huge. Okay, JC, cool. <laughs> Okay, well, we're going to do this. We're going to take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, we are going to chat about who knows what the hell we'll be chatting about. <laughs> but uh, we are going to take a break when we come back. We've also got Star Maker Bowling coming up in the second hour. He'll call us on the old skip Skype. So uh, we got more coming up. Hey, hey, hey. 